What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 craziest WWE men versus women intergender. Uh, I can't even talk. Intergender wrestling matches. Basically, this video should be called Equal Rights, Equal Fights. Let's check out some of these equal right, equal fights moments. You know, you know what we are here for. Let's get right into this one. <laughs> Since WWE transitioned into a PG product in the summer of 2008, they've been reserved in showing any form of intergender wrestling on screen. If any male versus female physicality does take place, it's usually very limited. But during the Attitude Era and Ruthless yeah, Aggression to happen Era, a lot more. intergender matches could be seen all the time. WWE are producing <laughs> downright wild and insane intergender matches that you won't believe took place. Mm -hmm. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the wildest intergender equal matches rights, in WWE history. Was Be sure always to subscribe and hit that notification bell for <laughs> daily then. wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Number 10, Tess versus Mae Young. Now in 2003, WWE had run a segment which highlighted how power had corrupted Raw General Manager Eric Bischoff. In the segment, Bischoff would reveal to legendary Mae Young that she was going to wrestle a match, a match against her former Intercontinental Champion, Test. As the match was about to begin, Stone Cold Steve Austin would introduce the special guest referee, Scott Steiner. Steiner and Tess were feuding at the time, and when Tess saw Steiner coming to the ring, Test did the unthinkable. Tess would knock down May's friend, the fabulous Moolah, before this delivering a cold, devastating bro. punk handle power slam on May. Bro, Fans were stunned at the time that May- May Young was taking a lot of bumps, bro. <laughs> she stayed taking some bumps. <laughs> he took a bump of this nature, and although the match was declared a no contest, praise was offered towards May for being willing to take a major bump and showing that even in 2003, she was still one of the toughest talents to ever lace up a pair of boots. Facts. Number 9, Stevie Richards versus Jacqueline. <clears throat> During the build to the 2002 Armageddon pay-per-view, WWE Damn, had featured that. a match oh, between Stevie Richards man. and Jacqueline Armageddon on Raw. Was, this was match tough. was a true showcase of Jacqueline, who showed fans that she could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Stevie Richards. Richards would end up getting the win via an underhook DDT in a brief match, but the match clearly opened the door for Jacqueline to work more intergender matches in WWE. Which is in crazy. 2004, Jacqueline would enter a feud with Chavo Guerrero over the Cruiserweight title and would even win the title. Which is crazy. Jacqueline was a vastly underrated talent in WWE and it was only appropriate that she was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame back in 2016. Number 8, A-Train vs Stephanie McMahon. Damn. One of the rivalries that dominated SmackDown in 2003 was a feud between Vince and Stephanie McMahon. This was a real Stephanie thing, was the bro. general manager of Raw, but her unbiased, fair approach to things wasn't going down well with her father. A-Train would get the win when he performed a corner slingshot splash, and the match with A-Train would be the final time Stephanie would wrestle a male wrestler in wow. 2003, as she would wrestle Brock Lesnar on Raw, as well as Vince McMahon in an infamous I Quit match at the No Mercy pay-per-view. So Number savage. 7, China vs. <laughs> the Two Stooges. China entering the 1999 Royal Rumble was a huge deal. Mm -hmm. China was set to be the first woman in WWE history to enter the prestigious match, and they would heavily promote her involvement on the episodes of Raw leading up to the show. To promote China's appearance, they would book her in a handicap match on Raw against two wrestling legends in Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe. <clears throat> the match wasn't exactly a wrestling clinic, and it did feature some spots which have aged terribly. Yeah. But nevertheless, the match was a showcase of China, and she would get the win via DDTing both men and then pinning both of them simultaneously. China would go on to have a number of intergender <sighs> matches throughout the Attitude Era, including matches against the likes of Chris mm -hmm. Jericho and Eddie Guerrero. Number six, The Big Show versus The Fabulous. And the crazy thing is, China, she can hold her own. China can definitely hold her own in a ring, man. They did not have a problem with China handing out the beats, but also catching the beats, too. Moolah. On November 28th, 2002 edition of SmackDown, The this Fabulous no Moolah would get the opportunity <laughs> to wrestle in her hometown, but there was just one issue. Her opponent was the reigning WWE champion, so The Big Show. <laughs> Big Show's villainous manager, Paul Heyman, ordered Big Show to treat Moolah like she was his arch rival, Brock Lesnar, and this led to Big Show getting set to choke slam Moolah before Lesnar thankfully made the save, declaring the match a no contest. Mm -hmm. Lesnar and The Big Show were then brawled before Lesnar performed an F5 Fashion after The Big Show so through cool. the announcement. Table to <laughs> that bring was, that week's edition of SmackDown to a that close. That was a cool spot Number too. Number five, James Ellsworth versus Becky Lynch. I forgot the SmackDown this product in 2017 was heavily criticized by fans. 
Following an unbelievable 2016 for the blue brand, 2017 struggled to keep the momentum going and yeah, pushes for the likes it. of Jinder Mahal and Baron Corbin resulted in fans turning off the show for good. Another element of the show that didn't exactly go down well with fans was the presentation of James Ellsworth. Yeah. Ellsworth would become an associate of Carmella, but Ellsworth had a ton of TV time devoted to him, and this resulted in his segments often overshadowing Carmella's character work. Ellsworth would also step into the ring during this time, and on one occasion he would actually wrestle Becky Lynch. This took place on the November 7th, 2017 edition of SmackDown, and Lynch would end up getting the win by locking her in the disarmor. Things went from bad to worse for Ellsworth, as Carmella would super kick him after the match, putting an end to their partnership for an extended period. Number Yeah, the Ellsworth stuff, it worked for a little bit, but then it, it kind of overstayed his welcome. It, it didn't. You know, it was like it was cool when it first happened when they were really doing this thing with going with, with Ellsworth and like him being this enhancement talent and stuff like that and s getting out some wins he shouldn't be getting but then it, it kind of overstated welcome so for three minute warning destroy the lesbians whilst <laughs> never having an official match with female talent a three minute warning were involved in a number of segments in oh, 2002 a, which saw them Morgan, destroy yeah. the opposite gender one incident of this took place when Raw General Manager Eric Bischoff ordered Rosie and Jamal to destroy two females who were taking part in HLA. One of the women would be super kicked, whilst the other was taken out with a bro, brutal looking look pop up smo and drop. Oh Jamal would then God. follow this up by performing a diving splash to the top oh my rope. God, the two women involved in the segment deserve all the praise in the world for taking bumps that of this nature. Going. They looked painful. We're going Number too three, far. <laughs> Jazz versus Bubba Ray Dudley. Jazz is without question one of the most overlooked talents of the early 2000s. Her in-ring work has aged extremely well and she wouldn't be out of place wrestling with talents of today such as Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. One of Jazz's finest moments of her career was when she wrestled Bubba Ray Dudley on Raw in 2002. Jazz would challenge Bubba for the hardcore title and it was clear from the opening bell that Bubba simply wasn't treating Jazz as a credible viable threat. Mm -hmm. However, when she introduced some weapons into the mix, her demeanor changed. Due to the hardcore title being contested under the 24-7 rules, the match saw interference from Stevie Richards, and it was Jazz using a shovel on Bubba Ray that allowed Richards to get the pin and become hardcore champion. Jazz more than held her own in the match, and this ended up being one of WWE's strongest ever intergender matchups. Number 2. Molly vs Crash Holly Wrestling fans applauded WWE's decision to induct Molly Holly into the Hall of Fame in 2021. Her work continues to be celebrated to this very day and Molly wasn't afraid to mix it up with men when the time came. This was the case in 2001 when Molly collided with her kayfabe cousin Crash in a match on Raw. Mm. The issues between the two cousins started when Molly began to date Spike Dudley and with Crash not agreeing with this romantic decision, the bond between the two disintegrated. The match was short but it highlighted just how good Molly was and it also okay. highlighted how unbelievably hilarious Crash Holly was as a performer. <clears throat> Molly managed to secure the win when Spike distracted Crash, allowing Molly to perform a trademark Molly go round to attain one of the biggest wins of her entire oh, career. Wow. And number one, Rhea Ripley versus Akira Tozawa. Yeah, one of the things that's been this. present on screen since Triple H took yeah, over WWE Rhea. Creative <laughs> has been the inclusion of more intergender moments. Most of these have involved Rhea Ripley of as her work with Judgment Day has resulted in Ripley having physical interactions with the likes of Rey and Dominic Mysterio. This On the been December me 19th, moment. 2022 edition of Raw, Ripley got the chance to compete in an intergender match as she would face Akira Tozawa. The match unfortunately did feature several botches, but the crowd were into the match and it was a clear sign that WWE should explore booking more intergender matches going forward. It was almost as if the match was an experiment to see how the crowd reacted to an intergender matchup, which mm -hmm. is a smart way for Triple H and WWE management to determine fan interest. In the match itself, Ripley managed to get the win thanks to a riptide in a very competitive matchup that certainly stood out on the stacked three hour show. But there you have it, folks. Ten of all <clears throat> and I think it's, it's part of the fact that Ripley, people like, like, people were invested into her character. Her turning heel, joining the Judgment Day, probably one of the best things that has happened for her in her, on her main roster career. Like, people rock with her, and there's a lot of simps for her. So, it's, it, anytime Rhea's on TV, people want to see it. So, whether it's fighting a, a woman or a male, doesn't matter. People want to see it. So, comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite intergender wrestling moment in WWE. The one I can instantly think of is Bubba Ray. 
out here once again attacking may young he was like in this trance state like anytime he put someone through a table he just went to this trance of just he was just in this euph euphoric state of mind and that's exactly what happened got may young she was in a wheelchair made sure he picked her up and threw her through the table off the stage and he was just in this euphoric state like this trance that i was just like oh okay this is what we're doing so that's one moment i can think of off the top of my head but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i am still you the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see uh, I, I, I fucked it up y'all know the outro y'all know